This is Michael Aller, and today we'll be compiling Unreal 4 from scratch. This assumes that you already have an Unreal 4 subscription and that you also have GitHub access. You will also need Visual Studio 2013, either Professional or Express, both with links in the description. You can get Professional for free from Microsoft DreamSpark if you're a student, otherwise you can use Microsoft Express. For this tutorial I'll be using Professional, but the instructions are pretty much identical. Once you have that installed, you should also make sure you have the DirectX end user runtimes installed. You probably already have these installed, but it's good just to install them again, so you are definitely sure you have them. And you need something to extract zip files. I prefer 7-zip, but you can use anything that you would like to extract zip files. Once you have all that, you're ready to start downloading Unreal 4. To get the newest version of Unreal 4 from source, go ahead and go to the Unreal Engine repo and then click the releases link on the top of the, the repo page. This will bring you to the page of releases, but the first release will always be the latest preview build. The preview build is very unstable and it's highly recommended that you do not use this build. Go ahead and use the next build listed that has a version number. For this, I'm using version 4.4.3, but most likely there'll be a newer version by the time you watch this. The files that you need are all these green linked buttons below, required one of two, required two of two, and optional. You also need the source code file right here. Uh, you can download the zip, you don't need to download the, the tar.giz. Once you have all your files downloaded, you should create an empty folder somewhere on preferably an SSD, but any hard drive will work as long as you have plenty of free space. You ideally have about 100 gigs of free space, that way you can grow your project without worrying about if you need a new hard drive or not. You can name your folder anything as long as it doesn't have spaces in it, but I prefer keeping my folder on the root of a drive and also naming it Depot. That's D-E-P-O-T. I am naming mine Depot as I use Perforce for source control, which if you'd like to use source control, there'll be a tutorial on how to use Perforce after this. However, if you're not aiming to use Perforce, you can go ahead and name your folder anything you'd like. You can also name it anything you like even if you are using Perforce, but Depot is just easier to work with. When you extract your files, the folder structure on the right should look something like this. Be careful about the source zip that you download. It will say something like Unreal Engine dash and then the version number that you've downloaded. Make sure you extract the insides of the folder inside that zip instead of extracting it directly. If you do, your folder structure will look a little bit different. You should have your engine samples and templates folder as well as the generate projects files bat all in the same folder in the folder that you've just created. Once all your files are extracted, you should be able to run generate project files bat. And this will generate all the files you need to start compiling the engine. Once that batch file is done running, you'll get a few files, usually just two, but you might get a few more depending on your setup. You'll definitely get a few more files once you start opening your solution file in Visual Studio. To start compiling the base engine, you should already have Visual Studio installed. Open up UE4.SLN by double clicking it, and this will open up Visual Studio. At this point, everything will load and this solution file is made with tons of different projects that all make up Unreal Engine, but we'll only need to be compiling one target. The target is essentially a project that has an output. Now we're going to build the just the editor for now. Your Visual Studio might ask you if you'd like to load into a certain development version or a development layout. I prefer the C++ layout and that's usually what you should be using with Visual Studio. But your layout might look different. It might be gray instead of dark gray. But you'll always end up with something like this. Either with a Solution Explorer on the right or the left. You should have a Solution Explorer somewhere that lists all your files. Now if your programs folder is open and your Solution Explorer, go ahead and collapse that. All that's not really needed. And go ahead and resize it so you can see more of the middle. That's where code will be when you start coding things. We don't need to touch any code right now, but we do need to touch the configuration. So at the top of Visual Studio, there's going to be a little box that says develop. But if you click it, you'll see that it's a drop down box that has a bunch more configurations. And it's not just develop, but it's development and then a few other development things like development client, editor, and server. Because we just want the editor right now, go ahead and click on development editor. In development is basically what you'll be using to use anytime you're editing or anytime you're developing. Shipping will be your final build when you ship it off to people, not just to test, but as in like a final retail. Generally, most testing and most development happens with, again, the development configuration. Once you're sure development editor is set, go ahead and find a UE4 project in a solution explorer. It's located in the engine folder that's located within the solution root node. Right click it and hit build. 
this will open up or at least start showing a compile log in the bottom here. Now this will take a while, but at some point it will be done. Once you hit build, you'll start seeing a bunch of text and output. At this point, just leave it alone. Do not do anything. Wait until it says the build is successful at the very bottom. This could take a long time depending on the speed of your machine. Generally speaking, the more cores you have for your CPU, the faster this will be. This output is an example of a successful build. Usually it says one succeeded and one up to date. Once this is built, if you want to associate all you project files with your version of Unreal, all you have to do is go to your folder. Again, I will refer to mine as Depot. Then go to Engine, Binaries, Win64. I am assuming you're on a 64-bit platform. If not, use Win32. Then scroll down until you find Unreal Version Selector. For me, this file is at the very bottom of this folder. By running it, it will ask if you would like to configure this directory as an Unreal Engine installation. At this point, you hit Yes, and then it's registered. So now when you run a uProject file, it will ask you which version of Unreal would you like, and this version that you built yourself will appear in that box. Once you have your engine built, there are a few ways to run the engine, but I prefer to make a shortcut in the root folder of my depot folder so that it's easily accessible. How I prefer to do that is to make a new batch file in this root folder here. To make a batch file, I'll start the editor. Go ahead and right click in here and choose new and just new text document. And go ahead and name this editor.bat. Not txt, but .bat. I'll ask you, if, are you sure if you want to change your extension to this? And go ahead and click yes. If you don't see file extensions on your files, such as .txt and .bat, you need to enable them. To enable file extensions, it really depends on your version of Windows. I'm using a variant of Windows 8.1 called Windows Server 2012 R2. And for me, I just have to go to the View tab and then make sure that file name extensions is checked. If you're using a different version of Windows, how you do it might be a bit different. Once you're sure that the file you made is a batch file, and an easy way to confirm this is if in the type column of your files it says Windows batch file, then you're ready to start editing it. You can edit it by going right click, edit, and that opens up Notepad. To start the base Unreal 4 editor, simply write start and then the path to the Unreal 4 engine binary, which is a little long, but it's pretty straightforward. That path is engine binaries win64 ue4editor.exe and then save that. Alternatively, if you don't want to run using a batch file, you can just go to engine binaries win64 and then find ue4editor and then create a shortcut to this exe somewhere. But for me, I like using batch files since later they become really handy when you have multiple projects and multiple editors to work with. So to launch the editor, all you have to do is run this new batch file. Here you'll see the Unreal Editor, and it'll compile shaders for the first time. Compiling shaders might take a while depending on how fast your machine is. Compiling shaders relies on both CPU time and memory and hard drive speed. As it loads, you should notice that it should say the version that you downloaded from GitHub. This will be 4.4.3. For me, it loaded the Unreal Project Browser, and it also loaded the Unreal Launcher. You can go ahead and close the launcher. The launcher is actually not needed when you build the Unreal 4 source code. It will open up automatically as a friendly way to say, hey, here's the launcher. You can go to the marketplace, but it is actually not required. At this point, you should be able to create a new project identical to the same workflow as you did without building your own engine, and everything should be functionally identical. I'm going to go ahead and create a basic code C++ example, and I want to name this project example project. You should name yours probably something a bit more relevant. And I want to create this project in my depot folder. Again, you might have called your folder or something other than depot, but I highly recommend creating your project alongside your engine samples and templates folder inside your depot folder or whatever you call your root Unreal folder. Putting your project in this folder will allow you to maintain code parity between your project and the engine source code much easier, and it will allow you to put you both your engine and your project on source control in a very streamlined way. If you're not aiming to use source control, then you don't have to worry about putting your folder in the same folder. Or if you already know source control, then you can set this up however you would like. And again, this is not a requirement, but I highly recommend putting your project in the same folder as your engine source code folder. When you create a new project, especially a code project, usually Visual Studio will open up with that new project open. You can go ahead and close this, as you don't really need this immediately right now. 
If you're interested in a slightly faster workflow, another thing you can do is you can add a file in your root folder that will associate your example project with this version of the engine, as well as any other projects you might have in this folder, into the editor browser and within the same solution file that you use to build the engine. This way you can build code for all of your projects or just look at code from all your projects together without the need of opening up several instances of Visual Studio. The first step in this, right click in here, go new, text document, and name your file ue4games.uprojectors with ue4 and the g in games capitalized. Again, that's ue4games.uprojectors, u-p-r-o-j-e-c-t-d-i-r-s. It's a bit of a weird file. This file will allow you to associate any project files with the main solution file in this folder. Once you create this file, go ahead and edit it by right-clicking it and choosing Open With and then Notepad. How you do this depends on your version of Windows. In this file, make two lines. The first line should just be a dot and a forward slash, and the next line should be the folder Engine, and then a forward slash, and then Source, and another forward slash. What this will do is that any project folders and files inside your engine root folder here will be associated with the main solution file as well as any projects in the engine source folder, which happens to be quite a bit of both third party and other editor and developer runtime plugins. Go ahead and save this file and then run generateprojects.bat again. After you do this, your UE4 solution file will have been updated. If you still have Visual Studio open from this particular solution file, you can go ahead and open it and it will ask if you'd like to reload. Go ahead and hit reload all. And if you don't have Visual Studio open, just go ahead and open that UE4 solution file again. This time though, in your solution explorer, you'll see under games, your example project. And now anytime you want to build code for your example project, you can do it same as you would before, but now it is permanently associated with your main solution file and you don't have to go around digging for this example project, nor do you have to open up the project and then hit open code in Visual Studio, because sometimes that might work, especially if you write code that prevents your project from opening in the first place. To build it, just go ahead and hit right click and build. Another way to start up into your project directly, instead of opening up the editor and then choosing your project that you just made, once you built your project, again which is an optional step as it should already be built at this point, every time you load the editor.bat, you should see your project pop up in the projects panel. If you would like to skip this step so that you don't have to choose your project, you can either choose to always load last project on startup, or you can create a batch file that will do this so that you will guaranteed to always open up this particular project instead of the last project you just loaded. The more you learn about batch files, the better life will be. Create a new batch file for your project. Go ahead and duplicate the editor batch file. And rename this to something descriptive such as the name of your project editor. For example, this will be the example project editor. This will be the editor for my project. Now, naming it alone won't change anything. So right-click this and hit Edit. At this point, Notepad should open. And at the very end of what you've written here, go ahead and write the name of your project. In this case, Example Project. And then save this. Now when you run this batch file, it should load directly into your Example Project, always. No matter what project you had last time, and no matter what engine you used last time. So this way you can switch to from your source code build to your regular UE4 download and it does not matter again what project, how you opened it, what build of the engine you use, as long as you use your batch file inside your root engine folder, you will always open up your project with your engine build. At this point you can use your version of the engine as functionally identical to the UE4 downloaded straight from Epic version, except now you have full source code access. At this point, you can now use your engine the same as you would using an engine directly downloaded from Epic site, whether it's through the launcher or through some other means. You don't need the launcher to actually use this version of the engine. You can give all of these files, as long as you give the entire folder to somebody, they can load up editor.bat and they should be able to run your version of the engine without any hassle, provided that they have the right things installed, such as DirectX runtime and the Microsoft Visual Studio 2013 redistributable, which you'll already have installed because you installed Visual Studio 2013. Congratulations.